Hi, everyone. First, I'd like to say thank you, Mike. Thank you for inviting me to be here. Thank you for your department for also making this happen. It's an honor to be here today, and it's an honor that I'm able to share my thoughts and my experience and to share this with you this evening, and hopefully you'll be able to pick a couple of kernels of knowledge, and you'll be able to apply them in your life. That's what my focus is for tonight. Okay. And bear with me because I've got my notes on the podium and I just want to make sure that I don't miss any of my thoughts that I prepared and I'd like to share with you tonight. Okay, so where am I? I am from the south of France. I'm from Monaco. My family was born and raised there. As an, the only deaf person in my family, they sent me off to St. Louis to an oral school. And then I was with my mom for 12 years for that. Um, and then in high school, I went to school in Florida. And then I graduated high school in 1999. I came up to RIT in Tahiti, and I stayed here until 2004. I majored in graphic design when I first got here, moved to photography, changed out my major one more time, got into the School of Business, got my degree in School of Business Administration, and then I thought about getting involved with a Greek organization. I got involved with Delta Sigma Phi. Thank you, brothers, for being in the audience tonight. I, per I really appreciate you being here tonight. I'm very proud to be a brother of DSP. If not for this organization, I would not be here today. Through my networking, they've helped me with my career and helped me with all that I've become today. Um, of the students, I encourage everybody to become Greek. When you think about networking and meeting people and what are you doing after your classes? You know, I thought about my career and how this Greek organization could benefit my life and I have no regrets for becoming a brother. So thank you to DSP. And if you've got lots of questions, please hold them to the end and I will gladly respond to them. Next slide. So I graduated in 2004 from NTID. I have an AOS degree, and I don't encourage you to actually do the same thing. I would encourage everybody to get a bachelor's degree, but in my situation, I had personal reason. I needed to leave school, and I was ready for the world of work. I went out, and I thought I'd go back to school. Unfortunately, I never did. I got busy in life, and life hasn't stopped. I've been blessed, um, but been busy, and I've been able to complete and forward my education. Jared Musarano was here a couple years ago, two years ago. So yes, I worked with Jared for two and a half years as an intern, which led me into permanent leadership. Um, but that's where I became a little bit of burned out with real estate and convincing people where they were going to rent their apartments in the city. And um, I had just really had enough time doing that. Plus, I was thinking about life with my wife and where I was going to change my future and bring my new family. And then I moved to Florida, got busy there. I had an eBay store. It was called a quick drop store. I'm not sure if you're familiar with those, but if you've got stuff that you want to get rid of, you bring it into one of these shops, right? They take a fee, they take a commission off whatever you sell, they post it for you, they get the money, they mail it out for you, and then they take a fee and then they give you a check for your property. So it's just a quick way to turn around merchandise for money, and that was pretty successful. And then from there, probably, a couple years later, um, I was like, no more of that. I sold the storefront, and we went to online only as opposed to having a box store, and that's when we decided to pull the plug, and you know, I could have continued in that, but it just wasn't meant to be. And then I moved on to a non-for-profit organization in St. Louis, Missouri, at Deaf Inc., and so we're thinking about opportunities and resources and a center where people could come in and get some support and some help, so I've been on the board with them. You know, I'm thinking about in the beginning, they had a budget of about 5K per month. Six months later, we were at, so six months. So when I first came in, I was at 5K per month to play with. That was our budget for the month. And then about six months post that, we were at 30K to play with. And today, they're at 1.5 million, just five years later, after me coming into the picture. My strength is, like, what's the problem? Creating a vision. We had an executive director who had all these dreams. I said, all right, let's find some solutions. Let's face it together, and let's make some magic happen. So we looked at debt. We looked at programs. We looked at supports and donations and collaborating with the city. And now the organization's doing fantastically. They've got 
got a great interpreting side of the house. Um, I will finish my term because of the bylaws. After six years, I'm their oldest member. They normally switch out their board membership. Um, I'm proud to be a part of that. I, I'm sorry, they're going to have to kick me out. I'm going to leave kicking and screaming. I really appreciated being a part of uh, the board with Deaf Inc. Then, well, somewhere in the middle of here, I got involved with Convo, the relay service, at the same time I was doing Deaf Inc. So there were six owners at the time, and there were two reasons why I thought about that. Well, I'm good friends with Jared, and I loved working with Jared before in real estate, and I was looking forward to working with him again. And then, you know, money talks. You know, it's about writing a check. It's about making, you know, wanting something new. I was like, hey, what's your budget? What's this all about? What's the return on investment, your ROIs, right? And then Combo is now grown from such a small, small business. Remember when Robin Hurwitz was the CEO? I told the team, you know what? I want him out because if he sticks around, he's going to hurt us. He's not good for our community. He's not good for our company. He doesn't have good standing with the FCC. And so with that being said, I wanted to take control of the business and make sure that we could grow together for a more successful company, and that's what we were able to make happen with Convo. So as a non-for-profit was going, Convo was going. I then moved my family back to St. Louis, and while I was there, I was bored. I needed something to do. I had Convo, and that was keeping me busy. I had Deaf Inc., and that was keeping me busy. But So I had print and shop that we were using before, and, and I wasn't exactly so sure about that. We were talking about con, uh, you know, contracts, and people weren't familiar with the name of the company, but it really wasn't a good brand for me, and that was a mistake on my part. I learned a lot about it, and I changed the company over. So do you know Nike, the Swoosh, Reebok? You're familiar with brand awareness? So I thought about Route 66. That's easy to remember. It's great branding. It's great to be aware. It's a great business now. I'm thinking about that. So now we're one of the best print shops. In the past four years, we have grown. We started with two employees. Well, I started the small print shop, and a lot of people, you know, we had a high demand. We had a lot of embroidery needs. We had banners. We had stickers. We had vinyls, canvases. You know, we were doing all kinds of things. Think about Nile and the twins, and, you know, we, we were the one-stop shop for a lot of these promotional materials. And so what started as a small nest, and this little bird came in, Everybody started flying out and becoming very successful. So people come to me, we get help, we let them grow, and right. And I hope one day that you had the chance to work with Route 66. You know, if you need help, if you're looking for an internship, call me. And you know, if you've got a business you want me to help collaborate with, please let me know as well. So Route 66, you know, that was a job that has grown and expanded, and I love that. We talk about everybody who communicates equally. We come together for meetings. You know, during like our team meetings, we come together, we bash things out, we hash things out at the table. But right, right, Blake. Blake's here. He's part of this group. He's worked for me before. Yeah, Blake, right here in the back. Right. Yeah, right here. <coughs> so from then on, maybe you guys are familiar with Deaf Nation. You know, the Deaf Expo that travels across the states. Well, they've had some legal issues, and so they asked me to take over in a temporary capacity while they're going through some litigation. And so I'm now managing their platform, managing their jobs, managing job talent, looking at resources. Plus, with the expo, I'm able to get out there, right, as an employee of Rochester. So when I leave here, and I'm thinking about the revenue being 30000 that's my goal to give back to this community. So I apply that. So when you come here, we raise money with admission fees and vendor fees, right, and then we give it back to the community. And I'm busy. We give back to every community that we visit. So with all of my business, I bring a lot of energy. Mike, go ahead and turn that next slide. So networking is about who you know. It's who you're able to work with. Know your enemies, know your friends, know your friends' friends. It can be anything, but you've got to know people. You've got to know people around you and use them, maximize them in the best way possible. All right, so my slides are a little bit different than what we've got on the overhead, but that's all right. I can roll with this. So my story. Remember, Jared was here two years ago, and I had done an internship. Jared and I, you know, I was like, wow, I needed an internship. And before I graduated, I was like, hey, Jared, my friend, I need a job. And he wasn't really sure he was going to hire me. And, you know, I started bugging him again. And 
he was like, all right, I'm going to give you this internship, but you're going to do it without pay. And for me, I was like, okay, I just need the internship experience. And then in May, he threw me another curve and he said, okay, but you got to move, but you're not going to pay. I'm not going to give you a place to live for free. And I said, okay, that's fine. I just need the internship. You know, we were thinking about, you know, running a family business and me getting involved in his life and knowing about his finances. But I was all right. I was like, I'm in. I'm, I'm investing my life. I'm investing my knowledge. So I work with Jared as a free intern in New York City. So that networking is key. Having a friend, having a fraternity brother, knowing the right people to leverage at the right time. You know, you've got to use your parents or your father's friends or your mom's friends or your teachers. The bottom line is use the people you know to maximize what's in your best interest. Ask bug pest if that's what it takes, but the ultimate is don't wait for a no. Continue to push and prod until you get that yes. You're gonna see lots of no's, right? But you've gotta to continue to ask and push until you get that yes. You know, if you're looking for a job, you're not in school for nothing, right? You're here because you've got a purpose in mind. Don't give up. You know, if, you've got a, if you're gonna take a shot, continue to go for that, roll for that. You know, if you wanna work for NASA, if that's your dream, Keep going. Don't ever get up until they're absolutely tired and sick and tired of you. And then they're probably then going to listen to you. Thinking about your friends. Think about using and leveraging your family members. So in the Greek community, you think you know, you're not friends with the enemy fraternity or the enemy sorority. That's really not what it's about. It's about collaboration. At the end of the day, you know, Sigma Nu was a different organization than mine, but now I'm friends with some of the Sigma Nu brothers that were there in my time, right? So we were rivals on campus. Now we're business partners. You know, think about the Greek organizations. You know, we're thinking about Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile. They're all in competition, but they all work together to provide telecommunications services to their customers. So it's the exact same platform if you're thinking about that, making your friends, the people who you're in the same business with, an opportunity for networking. So I'm telling you, you know, I've met some really amazing people. You know, when you might meet them in person, you have no idea who's going to bring what to the table. There's some amazing talents that I've seen. People who've got great artistic ability. Don't underestimate a single person's ability. I learned a long time ago, never underestimate. Talk, give somebody a chance. And I, I like, I see sparkle and I'm able to really take advantage of what people can bring to the table because I see so much. So anytime you meet somebody, be open to see what they can give. So Convo Relay, I'm involved with Convo, and Jared helped me there, right? He helped me with my internship, he helped me through my friendship with my life, and being involved in the Relay system, and now this opportunity has come full circle for me, right? So I'm involved and I'm supported that way. And then came Niall, Route 66. He was one of the famous clients that we had. You guys are all familiar with Niall and Dancing with the Stars? Absolutely. You know, I've got a great account for him, his account number, if I were, right? He's a smart guy, he's, he's dancing on the floor, but he's a brilliant businessman. He's a great strategic planner. Heidi, you guys know the twins, right? Heidi and Heidi? Yeah, there's this one woman who plays two people, so she's a, an actress, and so I've helped her, now she's become famous. And there are other deaf people who are in the pipelines who are also wanting to be inspired and take on new roles, but I've got new, good news for you. This past summer, Heidi made a motion picture, a Hollywood movie this past summer. And so we hope to release that in 2017. We'll be announcing the date very soon, but we'll have her premiere. It's funny, it's a learning experience, and I look forward to sharing her movie premiere with everybody. Calvin Young. Say that again? Calvin Young. Do you guys know Calvin Young? Right? He's one of my clients. I've supported him traveling the world. What he brings to us are videos. Right? He's talking about how to travel. So I, I've gotten to bring people together to help our community become a better place. He shares his experience and he's talking about deafness, right? And how deaf people travel. And that's what I'm inspired to do, right? My heart is wide open and I'm supporting all of these efforts because I want to give back to our community. Yes, it's about seeking the world. So teamwork is what makes the dream work. What were you saying? You in the white shirt. No, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you, come here. You, come here.
So it's not about, the student is saying, it's not about being the enemy. So what if you're not on the same page? Well, if you're not, the student is saying, well, if you're not on the same page, it's really about finding out what that other person's goals are and then taking a moment of reflection and then you're able to move forward with that, but it's not about blowing through a conversation. Tom is saying, but would you agree or would things fall apart if we, if we were in controversy? Would you agree with me if there was no teamwork, would things fall apart? And the student is saying, absolutely. Well, great, you've, you've demonstrated my point perfectly. Right, so you've got friends, right? Here you've got friends on campus. You've got people you're not so fond of. Stop, bring everybody together. You need every single person in this room. You over here, you're gonna need the guy across the room from you. When you think about your future business goals or your organization goals or your agencies or your doctors or your interpreters, right? I would not be here today without the team that I have. My Route 66 staff is outstanding. My combo team is amazing. And my other pieces of my career in the past, I wouldn't be here without them. I wouldn't see you here tonight. The teamwork has made the difference in my career. I've got some words of advice for you and some of you are like, hey, don't take anything personal because you're going to hear some hard things that you're going to have to swallow. You need thick skin, absolutely. You know, there are things that used to make me worry and panic, but now I can take it, right? It's about that thick skin. It's about having fortitude, right? It's about, you know, sometimes you're in a great day and you're having a great meeting. Sometimes things don't go your way, but the next week things work out, right? You don't take things personally in the business world. You take it, you analyze it, you think about it. It's never about bucking back. It's really about how we can work together better next time. Again, oh. and I'm going to oh. say this over and over again. People used to tell me no. I was told no all the time in the beginning of my business relationship. I worked hard. I worked hard to make sure my team worked hard. I walked the walk and I talked it, right? So I talked it and I walked it. It was about word of mouth and having people have trust and faith in my ability to do my job, right? You know, who used to tell me no is now telling me yes. That's the turnaround, right? You had to have the fortitude to not think, take things personally when people told me no. You know, it's really not about how we start, it's about how you finish. It's not about getting at the point of start, right? It's about getting to point B where you wanna be. You know, I wanna finish a meeting every single time with a yes. So how is it that we can make you say yes? What's it going to take? Right, it's about finding solution. It needs to be a win-win for both of us. But again, we always have to try and keep people saying, moving forward with a yes. You, know, you might realize, wow, there's an opportunity, right? There's an opportunity for money. There's an opportunity. You just got to keep going, right? Some people just walk out when there is a no. What's the worst? What's the worst? You continue to have this conversation, right? When you get a no that turns into a yes, I hope you have those same opportunities in your lives. Right? Don't think the world's coming to you. It's not jumping on your lap. How many of you think this way? Thinking the world's coming to you? You do. You in there? You, you think you do? All right. You know, I admit that might have been my thinking, you know, like I had a job, I've got a career, I'm pretty established, but that's not it, right? When I got into my internship, he was like, nope, not paying you for it. You're going to have to work really hard and prove it to me. So in real estate, you know, I was looking at acquiring clients, getting commission. You know, my first week I made about $4,000 in pay and I realized, like the light blew in me, the more I hustled, the more I was going to manage in my life, right? So it's about me and thinking about saving for businesses and what I was able to acquire and make happen. It's about the hustle. It's the keep going mentality, right? I'm still working hard day and night, spending my time with you. It's about you really learning to hustle. Right? Move forward. Work hard. Don't give up. When people tell you no, just keep going till you get that yes. Right? It could be a business loan that you're trying to acquire. They might tell you no in the beginning, but follow up and be like, hey, how can I improve my financial reports to make sure that I'm showing you what you need to see so that I could get the loan? You know, when they realize that I'm persistent and I'm consistent in my materials, the respect is built, and that's when I'm able to get those yeses.
you know, how is it that I keep going? I've got a goal that I want to attain. You know, the road might be windy, but I get there. The hustle is required. You've got to have that. You've got to have the drive to continue to work hard. Again, people are going to tell you no, but you've got to have the drive, right? That's my thing. It's the hustle. Chase that claim. Okay, right, you have to think about your message statement, your, your mission statement, what's your goal? You have to have a plan of action. You acquire a team to help you achieve your goals, right? It's about leadership, it's not about being the boss. As long as your team understands what you want, bring them on board and they move those goals forward for you. I'm here today, you know, Route 66 is running itself because I've got a team who knows me, I help them and I intervene when I need to, but if not, I'm able to be here with you tonight. If I couldn't lead my team to manage the business when I'm out, I couldn't be here. If I didn't trust them, I have to let them run their business, right? So the bottom line is follow your goals.